Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where if we have a regular n-sided polygon inscribed in a unit circle like this, we want to find the product of all of the diagonals coming out of one of its points, including these two edges here and here. We'll get a really nice answer to this problem in the end. And we're going to do this using complex numbers. So we're going to draw on the fact that, for example here, we've got n is 8, so we've got a regular octagon inscribed in the unit circle, and these correspond to our eighth roots of unity. So these would be solutions to the equation z to the power of 8 equals 1. And if we want to do this more generally, let's say we've got n sides on our polygon, we can do this using our nth roots of unity, so our solutions to the equation z to the n equals 1. So now if we take our first non-trivial root of this equation, we would have e to the i times it would be 2 pi divided by n, so that when we raise this to the power of n, we get back to 1. And let's call this omega, so this is our first non-trivial root. Then we can start to picture what all of these roots look like. So we get our first root would actually just be z equals 1, then we would go around to omega here, but then the next one would be omega squared, and we'd carry on all the way around like this until eventually we get to omega to the n minus 2, and finally omega to the n minus 1 here. So we've got all of our roots of unity form an n-sided regular polygon. So now we can work out our distances by referring to this picture here. So we can actually do this as, rather than thinking of it as distances in 2D, we can think about this as the modulus of the difference between two complex numbers. Then remember we're taking the product of all of these, so we need to multiply all of this together. So our first length would just be the distance from 1 to omega, and then we'll take the modulus of this whole product at the end, rather than taking the modulus of each individual term. And the second distance would be the modulus going from 1 to omega squared, so multiply by 1 minus omega squared, 1 minus omega cubed, and so on, all the way up to 1 minus omega to the n minus 1. So we just take the modulus of all of this product is the same as taking the product of each modulus separately. So this will give us the product of all of our distances emanating from this point at 1 here. So now the solution to this problem relies on thinking of this product as essentially being a function evaluated at z equals 1 here. So we can think of this as being the modulus of f of 1, where let's think what would this function actually be if it's evaluated at 1, where we would have f of z would be equal to z minus omega times z minus omega squared, and so on, up to z minus omega to the n minus 1. So this is just introducing a function now which is going to help us towards finding this product. So we've got the product of all of these lengths is the modulus of f of 1, where f of z is a function. If we substitute in z equals 1 and take the modulus, we're back to the products that we're interested in. And now if we think about the roots of our polynomial f of z, we've got a root when z is omega, we've got a root when z is omega squared, and so on. So we actually get all of our roots up to z is omega to the n minus 1. These are all of our nth roots of unity. The only one we're missing is z equals 1. But we can actually introduce this just by multiplying f of z by z minus 1. And this turns out to be really useful now, because then we've got a polynomial whose roots are just all of the nth roots of unity. So we get every single nth root of unity, which means that then this polynomial, because the coefficient of our z to the power of n term is just going to be 1, this whole polynomial can just be reduced to z to the n minus 1, because the solutions to this, where z to the n is equal to 1, are exactly the nth roots of unity. So multiplying by z minus 1, we get that z minus 1 times f of z can actually simplify to just z to the n minus 1, like this, using the property that it has exactly the same roots as this polynomial. And now we can divide by z minus 1 to get a nice expression for f of z, so we get z to the n minus 1 over z minus 1, and this is valid, this division at least, when z is not equal to 1 which is actually quite unfortunate, because this is exactly the value of z that we're interested in, so we want to find the modulus of f of 1. But nonetheless, even when z isn't equal to 1, we can simplify this expression, because you'll see this is actually the partial sum formula for a geometric series. So we can write this as 1 plus z plus z squared, and so on, 
up to z to the n minus 1. So we get this expression for f of z, at least when z isn't equal to 1. But remember, f of z is just a polynomial. So this is telling us then, if this is true for every single value of z, this means that the coefficient of our constant term, of our z term, our z squared term, all the way up to our z to the n minus 1 term, these coefficients must all be 1. So actually our function f of z must take this form for all values of z, including 1. So it's quite a nice way of seeing this without having to expand all of these brackets and deal with the cancellation, where we could expand all of these brackets and show that f of z takes this form. This is quite a neat shortcut we can use by considering the roots of f of z. So then we get this expression, which is valid even when z is 1. So then we just have 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on, all the way up to plus 1 again. So here we're just adding 1 to itself, and we're doing this n times. So we don't actually need to take the modulus here, but the modulus of f of 1 then would just be equal to n, because we're adding 1 to itself n times. So this tells us then that the product of all of these diagonals coming out from this point on our regular n-sided polygon inscribed in the unit circle is just n in the end.